Eric, don't spend a whole lot of time on the um, list because we won't be seeing you. We'll just be seeing the list. And I don't want to linger there longer than we have to. Okay, so we are live on Facebook. Hold on. Let me just record. And we're recording. We're good to go, Chris. Okay, thank you, Sarah. And welcome everyone to our briefing for the 28th of April. And uh, this is Tuesday. We're talking about business today. Governor DeWine yesterday laid out the beginnings of the path to recovery in Ohio for businesses and the economy. And while it seems like we were able to shut things down very quickly, reopening is going to take some time. But our business organizations in Toledo and Lucas County have been hard at work to make sure that employers and businesses have the resources they need to reboot and reopen under these new guidelines. You will hear today from Wendy Gramza, the president and CEO of the Toledo Regional Chamber of Commerce, Tanya Saunders, the director of the Lucas County Department of Planning and Development, and Sandy Spang, the commissioner of business services for the city of Toledo. But we wanna start first with Toledo Lucas County Health Commissioner, Eric Jasinski, because although we are working toward recovery, the governor is moving very cautiously. So we're gonna start with Eric. We'll ask our other panelists to please turn their cameras off now while he um, speaks about this. Eric? Thanks, Chris. Uh, you know, uh, again, Ohioans uh, and Luke residents have done a great job with that stay at home order. Uh, guidelines about wearing masks, uh, coverings. Uh, again, we're doing, a, we're doing a pretty good job. Uh, we're, looks like we have to do a little bit better job at that, but again, that come. Uh, we continue to take these measures, and we're, we're going to have to take them for a while. Uh, but that gets on the road, uh, that road to, uh, if you would, a full recovery, whatever that looks in the near future. Uh, but the first steps uh, are to open all those uh, medical office, offices, all visits, and outpatient procedures. It happens Friday. Uh, manufacturing, uh, distribution, and construction uh, opening next week, and some retail and general offices the, the following week. I, I think we have a, uh, a graphic uh, some of those uh, facilities and, and uh, these are still going to stay closed. Uh, again, at K through 12 school cares, uh, we heard that plain, uh, plain as day that those stay closed for the rest of the year. Restaurants and bars are, are going to stay closed for the future. But again, want to stress that carry out and delivery services are still permitted. Personal uh, appearance, beauty, beauty services, this includes salons, day spas, nail salons, barbershops, those body piercing locations, tanning facilities, massage therapy locations. Some of the businesses are closed uh, right now. Older uh, adult daycare services and seniors are, are closed. Adult support and vocational uh, habilitation uh, services, uh, aggregate settings, uh, rooming and boarding houses and workers' camps, and our recreation gymnasium sites. Uh, that includes movie theater, bowling alleys, and amusement <laughs> parks, concert halls, and those types of places still closed. For the businesses that are opening, uh, it will business as usual, and we've talked about this before. Uh, that includes the health department. Uh, it, it again is not business as usual. Uh, there are specific protocols and guidelines you'll be expected to follow to keep workers and, and customers safe. We've been with businesses, uh, business community, to compile these guidelines and resources to make reopening as smooth as possible. And, and that is something that we really do want. But this is not the time to take our eye off the ball, if you would. It is really important to still adhere to those social distancing issues, uh, the, the, the concept of wearing face covering. Uh, and again, uh, utilizing this plan for each one of our own businesses to make sure that again, we are keeping our staff is safe, our customers safe and our community is safe. So again, um, Chris, uh, I think we have some other uh, other uh, other individuals who'd like to talk about this. So I throw this back to you. Okay, thank you so much, Eric. And as you said, um, if you were a business owner or employer, you probably do have some questions about reopening your business. And the Toledo Regional Chamber of Commerce is a wealth of information if you are trying to reopen. President and CEO Wendy Gramza joins us to talk about some of those great resources to help now, Wendy. 
Thank you, Chris. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here with all of our partners. Over the last several weeks, the Toledo Regional Chamber of Commerce has been actively uh, helping businesses access information and resources on coping with the business disruptions that have been caused by the pandemic. Much of this activity uh, is focused um, and been led by our Small Business Development Center, or SBDC. This has included helping hundreds of local businesses apply for the Small Business Administration uh, loans, including the EDL and the PPP, which is the Paycheck Protection Program. Even before the stay-at-home order was issued by the state or the emergency declaration was made federally, we were helping businesses to prepare the financial information and make the financial decisions that would be vital for them to be able to survive in the short term and recover in the long term. Now, as the region starts the process of reopening for business, we are focusing on and planning for how Toledo's region businesses will reboot and join the economic recovery. We'll do this in several ways and important to note that new ideas um, are emerging every day. So this is um, what we're, we're planning to do to date. Um, the goal though, is to provide businesses with the support and resources they need. This will include um, increasing the capacity of our SBDC to provide technical assistance. Uh, that means that businesses will be able to talk virtually one-on-one uh, -on -one with um, one of our consultants about specific information um, confidential information about how their businesses will plan um, to reopen. We'll also be providing a, a business reboot checklist, um, which will, will be mentioned and is included in, in the health department information um, to really help businesses start to think about um, the issues um, that will be important to them as, as they reopen. This will include social distancing and, and other sorts of techniques, but will also include um, very specific information um, about how to, to work with vendors, um, how to adjust your cash flow, how to adjust your break even, um, so that businesses can really make real time decisions um, about their, their business. We'll continue to provide um, accurate and real time information about financial resources that are available to businesses. And hopefully um, we'll be announcing um, some, some local, um, local opportunities and, and, and um, potentials as well. We're also moving all of our program um, to virtual programming to put the best information and area experts in front of businesses and provide opportunities to share best practices across industries. We'll also be conducting um, business surveys. We've done two of them already um, to take the pulse of business, measure recovery, and ensure that we are meeting the needs of businesses. Business input is vital um, in this process um, so that we have um, accurate and complete information about how the recovery um, is, is progressing. So urge people to, to participate um, in those surveys. We also have a recovery focused advocacy agenda. That means that we want to ensure that lawmakers understand how public policy can support economic recovery as it relates to the, the ability for businesses to not only reopen, uh, but to remain viable in the future. To do this and more, will take many organizations working together to support all businesses in the region. So we've asked the region's major business organizations to join us in this reboot initiative. To date, those organizations include, and I think they'll be appearing on the screen here shortly, the Regional Growth Partnership, the Toledo Lucas County Port Authority, Connect Toledo, Destination Toledo, the City of Toledo, Lucas County, Bowling Green State University, Lords University, Owens Community College, the University of Toledo, Toledo Lucas County Public Library, Jumpstart Incorporated and the Toledo Business Growth Collaborative, the Employers Association, LISC, the Greater Toledo Community Foundation and the United Way of Greater Toledo. In the coming weeks, we will be working together on the Northwest Ohio Reboot Initiative with these great organizations to offer resources and services to assist businesses throughout our community. We appreciate the leadership of the City of Toledo and Lucas County, as well as the guidance provided by the Lucas County Health Department on many considerations like social distancing, facility modifications, and PPE, necessary to reopen safely for both employees and customers. Additionally, as I mentioned before, the Chamber and the SBDC have developed a business reopening checklist to help organizations think through the myriad of other potential challenges to reopening. 
businesses are going to need to be creative in the way they approach work, which is great news because business owners are nothing um, if not creative. They need to consider alternative work schedules and shifts, continuing remote work and preparing for increased absenteeism. Now is the time to begin planning, even if your business is not part of the May industry scheduled to reopen. And I know that most businesses out there have been thinking about reopening their business since the day you were forced to close, or maybe the day after. Uh, so again, we know that um, businesses are thinking about reopening and we want to make sure that all of the resources available to them um, can be easily accessed. Um, the road ahead um, is, for all of us, is not short or easy, um, but rest assured, none of us are, are traveling it alone. The Northwest Ohio Business Reboot Initiative is here to help all businesses in the community. We encourage any business owner, whether you are a member of the Toledo Chamber or not, to reach out to us for help at 419-243-8191. And visit our website at toledochamber.com for all the latest information and resources. Again, you have more information on your screen um, about how to reach us. We know that not every business um, necessarily has access um, to, to the website at their fingertips, so you can call us as well. Um, please be patient. Um, we're not, um, we're expecting a, a large volume of, of calls uh, and we will answer those uh, as quickly as possible. So um, again, I just wanna thank everybody. I wanna thank all the businesses out there for everything you do to create jobs in our region. Um, we know this has been a tough time and we look forward to helping you get back to business. Wendy, a couple of things there. Uh, first of all, it, this is open to not just uh, your chamber members, but all businesses in our region. Um, yes. I heard you say, right? So you don't have to be a chamber member, although you might want to join after you see how uh, what great resources they have available. And the other thing is that um, you have so many members that this is a great opportunity for people to share best practices and find out what's working for other people at the same time, right? Absolutely, Chris, that's going to be important. Um, it's also going to be important that we provide and we're planning to provide um, some more casual opportunities for businesses to network with one another. Don't know when we're going to be able to do that in person, um, but we want to make sure that um, we create some virtual opportunities to do that. I know many business owners are reaching out to colleagues um, every day, um, and, and that's very important, um, especially as we sort of work through the, the anxiety that comes with um, what's going on um, in our region, both personally and professionally. And so the more that we can get businesses together uh, to talk to one another and share best practices, I think that that's going to be um, very helpful to our business owners. Exactly. All right, Wendy, thank you so much. And um, we'll have her turn her camera off. If your business is not on the reopen list yet, you can still plan for the future. It's important for you to be ready to go the minute that that um, stay at home or that closed business order is lifted for you. So Tanya Saunders, the director of the Lucas County Department of Planning and Development has some great information on getting ready. And also you actually do have some helpful economic resources available, Tanya, through the county. Yes, thank you, Chris and everyone. Um, so Lucas County has a unique role in terms of how we are serving businesses. We have a dual role in direct service to businesses, but also preparing the workforce. Um, but more on the business side, um, you know, as we've been changed in our, our work settings with the COVID-19, it also opened up a door of creativity. And so talking with my colleagues across the state of Ohio, we've been able to adopt some very unique ways that we can still reach businesses and be creative because even in light of the COVID-19, um, there's a lot of recruitment still happening. Um, so we haven't really seen that slow down as much. And just trying to find a way, how do we still fulfill those needs with a, a lot of the constraints that's present? And so we've talked to some of, uh, some of the other areas uh, throughout Ohio that are creating ways that we can do virtual events, uh, virtual re recruiting events. Um, but on the, on the economic side, and it's been great to have this panel um, in collaboration and working together with the Chamber and the City of Toledo is really leveraging our, our funding, our local funding. And some of the, the features that Lucas County has the ability to do as we think about businesses ramping back up, it's not gonna just be like turning on a light switch. 
Um, there's going to be a lot of planning involved, a lot of training involved. Uh, as we bring, as the employers are bringing people back to work, they may lose some in that process. And so there may need to uh, be a lot more training or upskilling of existing uh, workers because they're going to have to change their operation. And so we have a few options, uh, one being um, on the job training dollars so we can help offset some of the training expenses um, and some of the wages during um, the hiring of new employees. And then we also have what's called encumbered worker training dollars. Uh, and that would be geared towards upskilling their existing workforce. So as they bring that workforce back and they discover that they need to learn some new skills or learn a new way uh, or obtain some other certifications, we can make those provisions to kind of stretch those dollars. Um, we also have what's called layoff aversion dollars. Um, so there may be some companies that are, you know, really toying with the idea or under, you know, really under the pressure of uh, knowing that there may be um, uh, where they may have to, you know, look at layoffs. So we have those provisions there. And I would really, really want to encourage employers uh, to have those conversations with us because there's provisions that we can make to hopefully, um, you know, not have the layoffs. So um, we've been, uh, our team has really been reaching out to employers directly to just kind of check in with them to see what their needs are. We've been giving um, some advisement in terms of, you know, the market is going to be very competitive as we've seen the numbers uh, grow daily with unemployment. But as that begins to transition, um, we're going to see a lot of people going for the same type of jobs. We have, you know, obviously Amazon um, has been moving fast forward and we're going to have a lot of activity that's going to kind of hit all at one time. And so we're really trying to take this idle time to work with employers one on one to really talk to them about job descriptions, to talk about the pre-employment piece, because uh, we may have to have some leniency in terms of how are we um, attracting available Available workers, uh, because as the doors begin to open, they're going to need those workers right away. And so on the on the workforce side, we've been taking this time to work one on one with job seekers to get them prepared to work out the details in terms of aligning their skill set with those available jobs and making sure that we are addressing those pre employment requirements so that they are ready to go. A lot of great information there and also those um, uh, layoff aversion dollars available and you can see right here on the screen um, the assistance that's available for employers and also for job seekers uh, through Lucas County and Ohio Means Jobs. And Tanya, um, all somebody has to do is just call you at uh, the, the phone number we just saw and we will put those uh, resources in the comments section here on Facebook and have those available for you as well. But um, before you decide to just lock that door for good, give a call to um, Tanya and the team there in Lucas County because they may be able to just get you through for that month or two, right? Until um, things get back to normal. We are here for you. Okay, thank you so much. And so um, Toledo's Commissioner of Business Services has also been very proactive in talking to business owners about the challenges and obstacles that they've been encountering and finding ways to overcome those. And Sandy Spang joins us now. And uh, you understand this on a very personal level, Sandy, being a, a business owner yourself, right? That's right, Chris. And I do wanna speak directly to those businesses that are contemplating what reboot means for them. Um, as everyone has said, the impact of, uh, on our businesses was sudden and reopening is going to be a process. For many businesses, relief funding and procuring the supplies you need to reopen are top priorities. Fortunately, as Wendy Grimes has said earlier, as a small business owner, you already possess these skills. Um, think back to the early days of your business. It was your tenacity and your creativity that brought you success. Now, to take on relief funding first, um, it began with the Economic Injury Disaster Loan. Many businesses applied for that. Very few have seen funding from that yet. Congress did add $60 million to that program. However, at this time, it's not reopened on the SB, uh, 
at the Small Business Administration site. So um, hopefully those of you who did apply previously will see some funding from that, but keep an eye on the site to see if they reopen the application process. The Paycheck Protection Program is applied for through a lending institution. If you were able to put an application in before funding closed and before applications closed, um, hopefully you'll be hearing from your bank soon. But you, again, to go back to this planning, you need to make a plan for how you're going to utilize those funds so that you will be able to maximize the forgiveness portion of that. So talking with a financial advisor, one of the many partners that uh, are available in our community that Wendy mentioned, to make that plan for how you're going to utilize that Paycheck Protection Program. But what about if you were closed out? What if you couldn't even get an application in? So much of that program depended on your relationship with a banker and that banker's ability to be qualified to offer the SBA program. Now we've seen $310 billion infused back into this program and with a real, with a real intention to helping the smallest businesses. Um, we've also seen that more financial institutions are going to be able to offer the, the Paycheck Protection Program. So it's not just going to be local banks, which is always the first place to start, is with your own bank. But if you're not successful with your bank or credit union, um, the um, locally, LISC, Local Initiative Service Corporation, has just been able, just been qualified with the SBA to offer the Paycheck Protection Program. And you can also reach out to lenders online. For example, Goldman Sachs through their 10,000 Small Businesses Program is offering the Paycheck Protection Program, especially focusing on minority business enterprises and nonprofits. Um, you'll see Quicken Loans, QuickBooks offering the Paycheck Protection Program. Just a, a word of um, caution there. You do want to make sure that you're applying with an SBA approved lender for the Paycheck Protection Program and not something else that, that isn't what you're really seeking, um, that has that forgiveness uh, aspect to it and that's offered through the SBA. Now, uh, there are a couple other things that happened within the last week or so that were good news for businesses. Liquor licenses. In our part of the state, those licenses renew June 1st. Um, we heard just recently that that is going to be deferred. We don't know the date it's being deferred to. That's going to be dealt with after the emergency. So you can breathe easier if your business uh, uses a liquor license, a CRD liquor license. Also, unemployment expanded so that uh, sole proprietors of a business and 10, 1099 employees can apply for unemployment through the state, through the Ohio Department of Job and Family Services, and also qualify for the additional funding from the federal government, the $600 per week. Another caution, make sure that you are not using the Paycheck Protection Program and the unemployment uh, funds um, at the same time. People often ask, should I apply for multiple programs? You absolutely should apply for multiple programs, but as you'll, um, as you'll hear from the Small Business Development Center or any of our other partners that you might work with, you need to make sure that you're not using them for the same expenses, that you're not double dipping with them. Use them for separate expenses. Obviously, scrupulous bookkeeping is so important. On the issue of procuring supplies, um, you know, you're going to need to reach out ahead of time to vendors. Um, something that you maybe could get in two days may take two weeks. The Ohio Restaurant Association is advising that most restaurants are going to take about two weeks to get up and running um, and procure the things that they need. So reaching out to vendors with sample uh, orders and saying, how long do you think this will take me to get? Um, and possibly having to create some new vendor relationships if the supply chain for uh, what you need has been disrupted. Um, and of course, you'll need to prepare for customer and employee safety with things that maybe you've never bought before. So the time to start is now. Most importantly, I just want to say, take advantage of everything that Wendy and Tanya and Eric uh, had to offer. The guide from the health department is really comprehensive. And it includes a link to state uh, guidance on particular sectors. As sectors open up, specific guidance is being offered. 
We have so many partners that are working on the Reboot program. Take advantage of some of that technical assistance. Uh, reach out and get some advice and, um, and maybe some new direction. So I think that the, the thing that I really want to say is that we are strong and together we will reboot. Thanks, Chris. Sandy, thank you so much. And uh, to our other panelists as well here today, lots of resources available. If you are a business owner in our community, there are people to talk to. There are resources available for you, both in the way of guidance and as you heard Tanya Saunders and Sandy talk about in the way of economic uh, help as well. So we wanna make sure that everybody um, is uh, up to date on what is available out there. So thanks to all of our panelists. We do have time for some questions. If any of our uh, media friends have questions for the panelists, you all can raise your hands and we will call on you to ask your questions, uh, as well as letting people know that we will be putting all of those resources and links in the comment section on the social media pages. And Toledo Chamber uh, and the Health Department will both have this information on their websites as well, so that you can access that at any time. Melissa Vach from 13 ABC has a question. Hi, Mel. Good morning, everybody. Um, I have a I have several questions for Eric, um, and I was having trouble with his um, audio. Let's see how it goes here. I may need to do a separate Skype with you, Eric, but. A uh, couple questions right off the bat. Um, we've been, you know, while we get it, can you more, you know, clarify more for us the businesses that you said that were closed still, like hair salons, etc. Um, the governor mentioned two dates. Are they going to be reopened on the second date, which I think was May 12th, or are they just not on a list yet, and we're going to be waiting for a while? The ones that we talked about being closed, you know, the hair salons, uh, those the, those entities uh, are are still gonna be on a list further down the line. Uh, I don't know when, I, I know there was some talk maybe at the end of May, but again, uh, I think we just need to, to listen to the governor and see when he, Dr. Acting feel that we should bring those other other entities in line. Okay, um, and again, I'm Eric, I'm having, you're freezing up on my screen. I don't know about other people's. Um, and the next question is, if people open up without being on the list, in other words, they don't belong on the list, they should still be closed, uh, who, how are we gonna be policing that? How is the health department gonna be policing that? And um, you know, how can people report it, et cetera? Sure, um, you know, again, we did the essential, not essential call line. Uh, I'm predicting that we'll, we'll be doing the same thing with the uh, closed or, or open type of, uh, entities or organizations uh so then to you know we'll, we'll be involved here with the social distancing and adherence to face coverings and things of that nature so I, I don't i don't predict much is going to change for us the health department relative to following up on those type of businesses uh i think definitions are going to change and specific things inside those uh inside those facilities are going to have to be adhered to it and that's what we'll, we'll follow up on okay um and then um, I'm also gonna ask you about our contact tracing within the county, Lucas sure. County. You know, mm -hmm. the governor had said that he wants to beef up each individual uh, health department's contact tracing team. Correct. How are we doing on that number? And do we need more people? And Well, I, I, I'm gonna go a little bit off uh, of track of what the governor is suggesting and Dr. Acton. Uh, you know, the John Hopkins uh, report says 15 per 100,000. Um, I, I'd like to see more than that here in Lucas County, uh, just because it, it, Mel, you, you've seen it. Uh, you know, we we gear up to actually respond, and then you know it it goes way off in left field. So I, I want to have us be more prepared uh, than than what the base is. Uh, again, working with University of Toledo, we've talked about this a little bit. The uh, the masters in public health students, uh, specifically the epidemiologists there. Uh, we've been utilizing them. There are other there are other students there too that understand science, understand how to talk to people, and they they've just been you know right there with us. So we have uh, again, uh, this is just a number that's out there right now. We have over 100, 100 individuals that could actually respond to uh, tracing concerns if we need if we need them. Uh, I understand where we're trying to go with maybe looking at full time individuals to do this. Uh, so I think there could be a mix here of volunteer and full-time staff to actually 
follow up on tracing. Uh, I'm again, I, I think as with any event like we're in right now, we're, we're trying to do what we can with what we have as we come out of this. You, you through some of these, a hot wash, understanding where we've at, looked at our systems, really take a look at how, how we did, we improved them. Uh, and again, I, I do believe that from my point of view, we need more than 15 per 100,000 uh, individuals to be able to, to trace and to contact. Uh, I just think that we owe it to our community to, to, to step it up uh, more than what the minimum would be. Okay, one more quick question, and I'm not sure if it's for Eric or for someone else. Um, the businesses that need PPE, I mean, even medical offices are having trouble getting PPE. Is there any resource within the county or the city that can help businesses get things like masks and gloves? You know, uh, again, uh, those masks and gloves uh, are still in, in relatively short supply. As we go through the next weeks to month, uh, we'll be able to, to hopefully have that resource, uh, that resource chain and flow uh, more, more like you, but we have to all remember that people are going to want to restock as well too. Uh, so the short answer is there, uh, again, there are, there are these and, and uh, means, uh, resource chains that are coming online that use those PPE. We're in this county, again, uh, utilize those emergency supplies right now to make sure that hospitals and other medical providers have the, uh, the they need. So we'll, we're going to have to work on that to figure out how those resources can actually be more more in line to what we county. Okay, thank you. Eric, sure. You are breaking up a little bit, but I want to invite um, Wendy um, to also come on and answer that question about PPE because I know you all have been looking and sourcing that too. Wendy, if you have an answer to that. Sure, I would just mention, um, I don't know if it's a, it's a solution for everyone, but we do have um, some specific resources on our website um, that, that came out of a, a call that we had a couple of days ago. Um, there are some regional companies that are making um, some of those materials available, so you can check our website at ToledoChamber.com uh, and um, links to some of those organizations are available. All right, thank you very much. I appreciate yep. it. Wendy, that, that might be one of the biggest questions you're getting right now, right? When I reopen, where do I get these supplies that uh, I don't normally have in stock or maybe didn't have to use before, and now I have to use them? Right, and I think that's, um, that could be part of the reason um, for the, the slower than what we had hoped for um, reopening is to make sure that, um, that we don't have um, such a shortage there that businesses that are allowed to open can't anyway. Um, and I do think that um, from what, what I'm hearing and interpreting um, from um, what I'm hearing from the governor and others is that, um, you know, the expectation that I go into um, a, a retail store when it opens in the middle of the month and they're going to hand me a mask is probably not going to be the case. Um, they, they will probably provide or try to provide masks um, for their um, employees, but, but customers, I think that's something that customers, um, individuals are going to have to, to do on their own. Uh, and they don't need um, necessarily, uh, the governor mentioned this um, in, in his press conference, they need face coverings, not necessarily masks. So people don't have to worry about where do I find masks? Um, you know, how do I get a hold of them? You just have to have your nose and mouth covered um, and we, we did joke that, you know, your hand is, is not going to probably work, um, but you can safety pin a piece of material or a scarf around your, your nose and mouth, and, and that should be sufficient. So people shouldn't worry about going out and, and, and doing that. Um, and the other thing that I will say is that, um, you know, people are very entrepreneurial, uh, and I'm seeing more and more places where you can order masks with your, your favorite team logo. Uh, I believe there are some companies that are even offering company logos on masks. So um, I don't know if they're going to be a fashion statement quite, um, quite to that extent, um, but I think there's certainly going to be um, a lot more opportunities for individuals um, to provide face coverings for themselves. Thank you, Wendy. I know that is a big concern. I appreciate you um, at bringing that up, Mel. A lot of people do have that um, worry as they're trying to reopen and reboot. Are there any other questions uh, at this point? I'm not seeing anybody else's hand raised and I'm not seeing any questions in the chat. 
So we will go ahead and wrap this up. I'd like to ask all of our panelists to please turn their cameras back on. I want to thank uh, our health commissioner, uh, Wendy Gramza from the Toledo Regional Chamber of Commerce, Tanya Saunders, also from Lucas County here with great information and Sandy Spang from the city of Toledo. Uh, all great resources. Um, Eric Jasinski, our health department director, uh, the guide that they have put together is amazing. Uh, it's on the health department website. We'll also be on the chamber website that you can access. Lots of interactive um, uh, stuff there for you as well as other resources from the state. So thanks to all of the panelists and to Desiree and David, our translators uh, hearing, uh, sign translators here today. Thank you so much.